What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls pregame. Coming to you live from our studios here in West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck, Bulls underscore Peck. Joined by our pal and producer back in the seat, Mr. Joey Spathis. He is at Joey Spathis. What's up, Joe? Hi, Matt. I missed you. <laughs> I missed you, too. I'm, I, I'm glad you had a fun trip. Thank you. I had a great trip. Glad to be back. And we've only got 10 games left, sadly. 10 to go, plus or minus a playing game or two. Uh, hopefully more. Hopefully. A playoff run. F- That's where you lost me. And sitting in the Big Dave chair with us tonight for pregame and postgame, our dear friend and someone you might recognize from a little show we did back in the day called Bulls Outsiders. I've always been known as the poor man's Dave Watson. <laughs> <laughs> the one and only John Savine in studio with us. Give it uh, up. Thank you for having me. Uh, follow for John's uh, hilarious jokes, NBA takes, and more uh, on Twitter, jsavine214. Yeah. Also, follow Merriam-Webster on socials if you aren't already. Great stuff. How you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. I'm oh. excited to watch some basketball with you today. I'm excited, too. I think it's going to be a good game. And it's not even Bulls Mavs. We don't have to stress about your dual fandom. No, it, I, I feel like now I, I can just go. Yeah. I mean, I don't care about the Pacers I at mean, all. <laughs> It'll like, be an entertaining I, game between two teams who don't play defense. I'd rather be dead in Illinois than alive in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to out you, though, in front of our fellow Bulls Please fans. Please do. Bef- you know, but what was it? A few weeks ago now, when we had that Bulls Mavs game, yeah, and we were texting leading up to it. But and we context- we wanted you to come and sit in with me and Big Dave to do pre and post game that night because yeah. it was Bulls Mavs. Yeah, and you're like you couldn't make it work with I your schedule. You're a family man now. I do. But you sent us a video of you and Mini you. Yeah, little Jackie. Boy. Uh, shout out Jack. Shout out and Jack. you were like, guys, like let's just w- have some fun watching Bulls Mavs tonight pretty sure the Bulls are going to take it. Like but, It's like, yeah, we have Luka, but we have nothing else, and the Bulls know who they are. They have an identity. They're playing with an yes. identity. And then Luka and the Mavs dismantled the Bulls that and won was, by 30. That was <laughs> insane. I, I've never been more wrong. Because also, that was coming off the Bulls' road trip, that amazing road trip. Yeah. And this was coming across like Jason Kidd trying to download Angry Birds on his phone for the 30th time. <laughs> was and it I, Angry Birds or Angry Birds 2? He doesn't even know. <laughs> he has a T-Mobile sidekick. Like, and, So like, I, I really did think that. I was like, you guys are playing. Because you guys were gelling, and we did not know even who was the starting lineup. Yeah. like and So I was just like, okay. But I could not have been more wrong. <laughs> Because that was, I remember that we were texting, and I was like, "Oh, just, oof. just crushed him." And I was like, "I actually was like, I'm glad I wasn't on the show, because it just would have been weird." <laughs> like, like, well, it would have just been you being like, "Oh no, we actually we do have Luca," and I think that's the thing, right? Yeah, you know, that's the Bulls that's and the thing, right? The, like the fact that also since you guys made a couple of big swing trades at the deadline, I mean, you brought in our old pal Daniel Gafford, Daniel Gafford Outsiders. I mean, for real. We were some of the biggest Gafford hype Guys, people do you, his rookie year. Everyone here remembers the very first play of Summer League, his rookie year, where he wins the tip, gives it to Kobe White, <laughs> and it's an immediate alley-oop. Yeah. It's an immediate alley-oop. That was, his, that was the first seconds of Daniel Gafford and Kobe White's career in yep. Summer League. We watched that, and we were like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we had that game, I think it was Bulls-Bucks? Yeah. Uh, season two of Outsiders and Gafford put up like 22 points on 10 of 11 <laughs> from the field, <laughs> and grabbed 50 rebounds. And you know who the ball head menace refused to play him in the fourth he quarter. Stopped playing him. <laughs> and that's when I knew <laughs> that the world was rigged. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's no justice for anybody. That was what he didn't play him. Yeah. And then said, Oh, I thought I didn't want to. You know, didn't want to. Just the wild. Didn't want to win the game. <laughs> Just the absolute wild. Why wildest. would you want to win? My goodness. Uh, shout out to Rob in the comments. You said, we're probably going to need Sabine's sense of humor in post game. No. Maybe, maybe not. The Bulls are trying to, you know, drop this uh, or, or 
break this three-game skid that they're on. They've taken L's to Houston. That was the final game of their four-game uh, trip. They dropped one at home Saturday to Boston because Boston's better, even though Boston was missing three of their starters that night. They're insane. And spiraling into the worst of the worst, the Bulls dropped a game at home to the Wizards on yes. Monday, John. I know. I did. The Wizards. I, I started. I was watching, and then I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm, ugly. It's not my job. So ugly. I did something else. Uh, that was ugly. That's bad. Like truly impressively bad, but like, I mean, what? It's one of those. They almost came back. It wasn't like embarrassing, right? Like it was one of those. Like you know, oh, they caught us. They still, you know, it's like they caught us. This is, that's how it should be, right? Like it, they shouldn't be these terrible, terrible teams. Well, it's. I think it's just kind of who the Bulls have been for a few years now. Yeah, they're capable of beating anybody. Competitive. They're capable of losing to anybody, which is. I mean, kind of fun. Tune in. They're, they're, they're the clickbait of yeah. teams. It's, it's, it's fun if you keep a, an eye on it from a distance. I mean, it's less fun when you watch all 48 minutes, all 82 games, and you want to tear your own face off. Truly. And it's because it's one of those things where you kind of know, you know what the, p- people's ceilings are. Yeah. And so, like, you're like, great. But. So, at, I'm curious, as someone who is. Uh, admittedly, I, a dual fan, and I've been checked out. I mean, of everything and I don't, this year. I don't, I don't blame you, bro. I've been checked out of, like life, like, fo- <laughs> like. Also, you have a toddler, so this like kid, this kid wakes up at five in the morning every day. <laughs> I, I get it's so annoying when people are like my kids. Blah, blah, blah. We were just it, texting the other day terrorists. about how terrorists. your sleep schedule with when you get up with your son in the morning and my in season. Yeah, like, so when do you go to bed? Around 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Like Rob Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting lonely. And, <laughs> and you're I, up at 5. I was up at 4.45 today. Oh, my God. Not by choice. We used to work at night. And you're going to hang out with us and do post game. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> like a goddamn hero. I got no contract. I can just leave. <laughs> like, th- 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 nothing is physically keeping me here. You, you don't have a contract? No. Oh, you should talk to Will Purdue about that. He loves talking about the absence Will or Purdue. lack of a, a existence of contracts. I texted Will Purdue. Because he texted he, before the season, he told me that Grant Williams was so annoying that it's a negative, and I was like, "No, nah, he'll be good for the Mavs." So I texted him when it turns out he was very annoying and got yeah. traded. And the only thing he texted back was, "Know your role." Know your role. Know your role from Will Purdue. <laughs> I mean, I Which feel like is, Will Purdue is a great example of an NBA vet who had a long, successful career. He was in the league for four <laughs> rings, like oh one boy, and a half decades. Four rings. Four. And almost always was a bench role guy. Knows what he's doing. Know your role. Jail Blazers. So what do we say? So what do we say? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, that is a bull for know your role. Uh, <laughs> uh, he thinks we, he's really worried about the, our contracts. Yes, always. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's take a quick break and shout out a couple sponsors real quick. Then we'll come back. We'll dive into what the Bulls are facing tonight <sighs> with this uh, season finale uh, Bulls Pacers in that series. The Bulls actually up two games to one on the Pacers in the regular season series. Well, surprising, right? Tab breaker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and like both teams have a lot to play for Pacers right now. Yeah. It's clinging, weird. clinging to the sixth seed uh, to avoid the play and bulls clinging to the ninth seed it's to try and have home court in the nine, 10 playing kind game. of fun. Huge game. Yeah. Uh, not, not as big as Mavs Kings was last night. Hey, worked out tied for six, seven big good win guys, for the Mavs. Good guys. What? <laughs> good guys. A boss. East. Sacramento. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no one's crying for them. Don't cry for me, Sacramento. Come on. Uh, all right. While we're doing that, you know what to do. Multitask. Listen to these words from our friends and sponsors and hit that thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, do it for our guy, Joe, who's back in his producer seat. Do it for our friend, John Sabine, hanging out in studio with us tonight. He likes thumbs, just like the ones that are popping out of his fingerless gloves. That's, that's how you can make use of your thumbs. Please. You don't want to contrap them. Um. Pre-game tonight brought to you by our friends at Circa Sportsbook. Shout out to them and their staff up in Waukegan uh, who hosted some of our crew. Cody from Cubs and uh, Braggs from Bears did a big fun uh, Big Ten Day uh, for the first day of March Madness last week. They also did our CHO Bear Show up there. Uh, had a lot of fun. Made some bets. And you can too with that Circus Sports Illinois app. Always striving to have minus 10 starting odds on whatever you're betting on, NBA or anything else for game uh, game props, point total over-unders, game spreads. Unlike a lot of sports bo- uh, sports bettors and sports books these days who push those odds to 115 or 120 for no good reason. 
no good reason at all. Like not playing Daniel Gafford in the fourth quarter of close games. <laughs> <laughs> Circa also keeps as little money as possible on those large market bets. For example, NBA season long awards, MVP, who's winning it? Is Luca going to dark horse it? He, don't even get me started. <laughs> this man has been in our text thread I with can't. Big Dave and our old pal Bulldog over I've, at NBC for the last month I've, I've, about I've the. Turned, I've turned into such a psychopath. The conspiracy theories that exist about preventing Luca from winning it MVP. Luca on. <laughs> I can't. There's not. There's not the venue for. It, but I'm unwell. I'm unwell about it. At least you are in fair company, because most Bulls fans, I think, are also unwell. Hey, let's. let's <laughs> but out. hey, if you want to bet Luke and win MVP or anybody else, Please. who do you think it's going to be? Yeah, okay. Joker, yeah, SGA. Yeah. The best place uh, to make the best odds on those uh, season-long bets is at Circa. Uh, or if you think you know who's going to win it all, uh, who's hoisting Larry O'Brien this season? Make a bet on NBA champs. Do it at that Circa app. Who also have the best customer service in the biz, real people behind the Circus Sports brand and their app, who resolve any issues you might have in a timely fashion, unlike those other sports better than sports folks who use the dreaded chatbots. Death to robots, humans shall prevail. Uh, download that Circus Sports Illinois app at circusports.com slash Illinois dash app to sign up today. Be on the lookout also for their Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates just like the one we had up in waukegan last week if you or someone you know may have a gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER that's 1-800-426-2537 text g-a-m-b to 833-234 or visit are you really winning.com have you gotten into gambling yet john no i i i'm that's a door i i but i love the sponsor uh <laughs> but uh no i have it i like and i also like uh you were an actor so i like, was you you start to live not knowing that certain like, you're like, oh, I have this amount of money. Right, yeah. And then even when you start to get, like, more money, you're like, oh, I'm still, like, I, like I still borrowed my wife's car to get here. Yeah. And it didn't work. But, like, it, it's one of those where it's like, oh, I could. I guess I could, but I'm just afraid to go down that line. Uh, you know, it's, it's a totally reasonable decision. I have a, my, one of my very best friends just got into sp basketball. Yeah. He was, like, homeschooled. He's a great guy, uh, but not a sports guy. He's lo But he likes to gamble. Mm -hmm. He told me. I just lost a hundred dollars on the Hornets, and I go, bro. Only you and Michael Jordan have lost betting, on betting the Hornets. Betting on the Hornets to yes. do successful things yes. on an NBA and court. I was like, dude, you need to talk to me. Like he just like that's he, wow. He bought NBA League Pass this week. He lives in Brooklyn, and he's like, I can't watch the Nets. It won't show me the Nets. And I'm like, yeah, it's that's the only you won't be able to watch it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But he's like trying to gung ho gung ho into it. And I'm trying to be his like uh, guide. On yeah, this. yeah. But I don't. That's, I, I need. To, that's maybe, wild. Maybe I'll gamble tonight. Maybe tonight's my night. Hey, uh, you know, I've I've got I've got the app. If you feel like putting a bet down, I can do it for you. Parlay. Just, you know, let me know. I O yeah. parlay. Ooh. Uh, speaking of, I mean, I've been playing great recently. We uh, we will get to that in a second. But we also first have to shout out our friends at Joey Spathis. <laughs> what time is it? Game time. Oh. Sorry, I gave you a pause because you were having a moment with Sean there. I didn't want to distract you. Uh, with the Game Time app, it makes it fast and easy to buy tickets for all the sporting events, music, comedy, and theater near you. You shouldn't have to worry when buying your tickets to your next big event with killer last-minute deals, all-in pricing, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets tickets you can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what that view is going to be like when you go to the venue no unexpected obstructed views pillars right in front of your seat none of that not with game time they also have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event even an hour after the event starts if you and your friends want to make an impromptu decision to go catch a comedy show or go catch a cubs game or a Sox game baseball season starts tomorrow you can get tickets on game time a hour after that event starts with as much as 18% in savings and not just as much as that's just their average savings on ticket prices compared to other ticketing apps and the game time guarantee John means you'll always get the best price and if you find tickets on a different ticketing site for real yep in the same section that's insane. and the same row for a cheaper dollar amount game time will credit you 110% of the difference in those prices that's like, <laughs> I don't work for that. I don't have a no contract. That's literally, that's a real, that's insane. Game time has deals on <laughs> deals on deals. It is the place to get your tickets. Uh, if you're going to concerts or sporting events in Chicago, 
Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download their Game Time app, create an account, use promo code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Because y'all say, what time is it? It is uh, Game Time who? That's right. Hmm. Whom? 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 Is it who or whom? whom? Well, tonight, whom? Sometimes it's who. <laughs> <laughs> it's a made-up word to trick students. Exactly. Who said that? Creed? I think Creed said that. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> what if deli- they're bringing it back? Are they? Reboot. What? I think it's they're just rebooting gonna, the office? Well, I think it's just going to be another office in the universe. There are no good at fresh no, ideas I think, anymore. I think, I think this one could work. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How you doing? Um, you think it'll work? I mean, I loved it, <laughs> but also like... The last two seasons of that show were completely unnecessary. I think it'll work if it's just like... You, you trying to get me to watch The Office, whatever it is, without Michael Scott, a.k.a. Steve Carell in it? Oh, my God. Good luck. Pass. I mean, uh, you no know one's going to fight you on this. <laughs> uh, Peck, I, I have a... I have a. Are you done with the rules? I am, yeah. I have a question for you. What, what's up? How are you right now? Like, because you... Like, I, your fandom is deep, and it is... Uh, <clears throat> It, it abuses you sometimes. It does, and it but it, but it lifts you up sometimes. It's uh, you seem clear eyed, clearer eyed than normal. Thank you, like zen like. Um, I well, so I I think emotionally and mentally I'm okay right now. Okay, because I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like we're close enough now. Like after tonight, the Bulls will have nine regular season games left, single digits. I removed myself emotionally from being invested in this team when they got blown out by the Celtics and dropped to five and 14. Like I was like, this team ain't it. Yeah. When I, and it was like, like the swirling with the Zach Levine trade rumor stuff. And he basically requested yeah. a trade and wasn't playing well after the trade request stuff went public. And the team was just so discombobulated. And then it was just injury after injury after injury. I was like, look, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to be there for my fellow bulls fans who bleed bulls red every minute of every year, whether you're in season or not. Cause that's why I do this job. But I have, for my own mental health, just removed that part of it. You seem so... Because uh, I, I can't. I can't be light. rooting for wins like in close games against the Wizards <laughs> in late March. Because <laughs> I don't know how some Bulls fans do that. Because I know what the ceiling of this team is. And it is not up to my standards as a Bulls fan. And, so why torment myself? And the injuries have been, I feel like, underplayed on this team. Like, yeah. It has been an entire year of severe, severe injuries. And I feel like that hasn't gotten enough play. I mean, one season ending injury after another. Yeah. Like, well, Lonzo, Lonzo, they ruled out before media I mean, day. Lonzo has like, like um, he has Lonzo. He might ball. come back next season. He has Lonzo ball syndrome. Oh my goodness. He's and, the first ever. And then it was Zach got well, yeah. hurt, came back from the injury, got hurt again, done for the season. Patrick Williams. Patrick, that's the weird one. Season ending injury. But we knew it. We saw it coming, right? Like even with the first one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then Caruso's day to day for the rest of his life. Correct. Uh, <laughs> but he's playing tonight, baby. Active tonight. Uh, shout out also, real quick, to our friend uh, Flipside23. Uh, you may have remembered him, John, uh, on our. Remember when we streamed on Facebook on Outsider Shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. JR from GR. Oh, yo! Saying, what's up, Matt? What's up? Same I missed you in the sig- signature you. fingerless gloves. Uh, Charlie said, hey, close to the same pack as far as how you're feeling about the Bulls. However, the loss of the Wizards a couple of days ago was a new low. It really was. Um, that's, I mean, we've already lost to the Pistons twice, so you can't immediately give it the mantle of worst loss of the season. But but the first one I was here for. Was that's like, right. And, yeah. And we thought, the but the Pistons, we didn't know were bad yet. Correct. Like we thought, like I were like, oh, they're gonna be kind of good. That was like know? the fourth game. It was, of the season. I, it was game yeah. two, I yeah, think, yeah, of the Kane's season. Back, like, like I think there was like it didn't feel as bad at the time. Right. Yeah. And now, now it does. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Caruso being still and always on the injury report, but given the green light tonight, he is in the starting lineup. Uh, so Caruso was a game time decision in their game Monday, John. Uh, he got the green light, but Billy decided to bring him in off the bench. Started Tory Craig in his place. But Billy reverting back to having Caruso in the starting lineup tonight at the power forward position. Um, That's just, just Just a classic. So you got Kobe and Io in the backcourt, DeMar, Caruso, and Vooch. That's your starting five for the Bulls. Uh, Io did pop up uh, at the last second on their most recent injury report with a mm-hmm. upper respiratory illness, but apparently he's feeling well enough to get the start as well tonight. Um, what, what have you made from what you've seen, John, of this uh, new Bulls fan's 
grasping at straws to find something not to hate <laughs> Kobe and IO backcourt and I, what they've done this season. I, I think it's legitimate. Yeah. Like, and when I was today thinking about like, what are some positive things we can talk about? Those were the first two things that came to mind. Yeah. And Kobe's legitimate. Like Kobe is like legitimately, it's so fun to see him there. It's, it, it's not fluky it, to hear. And then it's like, to, when you're listening to like, national podcast like when Zach, Zach and they they bring up Kobe White there's like this air of reverence now right which is like well you had a tweet recently with a Kobe White injury update mentioning him as like a leading candidate in the most improved player award yeah and I feel like he should like it's really but also like that that's such a weird award like no one even knows what it is like yeah. uh but and then but I owe that that's the one that kind of shocks me because like Kobe yeah. was like you know seventh pick High, you know, right, chip. yeah, it was a like, high lottery pick. He would drop 30 off the bench, and you're like, okay, well, there's something there, right? <laughs> yeah, like, if you can drop 30 off the bench at great shooting, but Io is something where I'm I didn't think he could shoot like this. I mean, huge strides in it's his like 40% shot. from three or something, yeah, like it's unbelievable. And it looks, it's not like, Ugh. yeah, no, it, <laughs> it looks in, better in than his Luchas. stretch of games where he was taking on more of uh, you know, a point guard kind of responsibility role in Kobe's brief absence. Kobe, you know, had a hip injury. I had a stretch of three games uh, in a row where he shot like 56% from three on like a high volume of threes. That's a, so I, I think this is like, and for cause, cause to be optimistic, 1000%. Yeah. Because the, I always like found money, seriously. And, and as a second round pick. And with Kobe's, and the, Kobe's contract. Right. And now also the very modest contract they signed IO to this past summer. Imagine if him. this was. I, I think that's what Bulls fans are kind of hoping for at this point. Like, if if you find a trade partner for Zach this summer somehow, you will. You find you, you know uh, a way to get off of Lonzo Lonzo's last year of his contract off your books. Maybe we'll see what happens there. But it's like it went from being like, can Lonzo come back and what's going to happen with Zach Levine and can he get back to an all season all star form to now Bulls fans just being like, well, you know, like Kobe and I are both now under contract for the next couple of years on real cheap deals and maybe they can just be our starting backcourt and i think those like i don't th and i don't think like max is like obviously you don't like you don't like zach is like what they use it's like the albatross yeah every, every contract tradable right but it's the it's those if you can get those ones yeah like it, it's it's more of like the positive contracts that are that you should as opposed to worry about the negative ones. right i feel like zach Le the zach levine trade is going to be like the Kyrie trade it's going to be like two okay people and a, and a first well, I mean, there are some who are worrying now that, like, because of his season-ending surgery, adding to his sort of, like, like reignited label as an injury-prone player that he had done so much good work to bury in his past, and the fact that he was not playing well when he was out there this season for small stretches, the Bulls are going to be in a position where they have to, like, give up assets to get off of Zach's deal. Which is the I new don't, terrifying I, potential I, reality? I, I don't think they will. Like if they didn't have to give up assets to get off Kyrie and Ben Simmons, and, you know what I mean? Like what Zach has done is like not as ins not as baggagey is what I'm saying. Interesting. Uh, Anthony asking, by the way, would John want him? I assume you mean Zach as the third option on your team. I'm okay right now. <laughs> You're okay. But I think if you would ask me, like, I mean, why why would you need? You got Luca and Daniel Gafford, and like, yeah, okay, fine, Kyrie Irving, but like, yeah, I don't know, Luca and Gafford's all you need. We, we got scoring. <laughs> I don't, we need we need sort of play D, we need Caruso, but so does every team. That's that so was the most annoying part of the trade deadline. Can we just, how every stoop every team was like, you know, what I really want Caruso. And it's like no kidding, yeah. no kidding. You want Caruso? Yeah, because he is leading the league in every advanced defensive metric there is. Basically, truly, oh, you know, and they, they would always like couch it like it's like some s hidden they found this right you know would be really good for, for our team yeah i, I can't I'm, I'm on caruso it's like yeah yeah dude get in line so everyone does i mean according to multiple reports from all over the nba like seven half, first half, seven first they half the league first. half the league called the bulls about caruso if they like, didn't that's the other half didn't yeah. gross negligence then exactly what do you have to do all day make a make a phone call yeah. <laughs> like text it's not that hard, right? You're just staring at the Isn't computer. that the job? That's the, literally the job. Yeah. Can I have them? No. And the Bulls front office, in their opinion anyway, their job was to hang up and say, no. Yeah. We, they, we, we value him too much. They were, I do think they were looking at every single transaction as one as a one-to-one, -one, as yeah. opposed to looking at the entire tapestry of right. the team. Yep. 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, we heard it from the horse's mouth, AK said in his trade deadline press conference. Well, we, we were looking to be buyers at the trade deadline, not yeah. sellers, and, because we still see ourselves as a team that's right in the thick of it in the Eastern Conference you you know, playoff say, I, And I, You have to say that. We, we, we wanted to be buyers, but then we ended up being nothing because the buyer's market was out of our because price our, range. Because we had bad credit. We couldn't. <laughs> Unreal. Um Taking a quick second uh, to look at what the Bulls are facing tonight. Again, oh, yeah, this is their fourth and final game against the Pacers. Uh, their starting lineup, so obviously still missing Benedict Matherin. Big loss for them when he had his uh, season-ending sh- surgery on that torn labrum in his shoulder. TJ McConnell and Aaron Neesmith, who have both played big roles for the Pacers uh, in the back half of the season, were listed as game-time decisions. They have both been given the green light. Starting five for Indiana, Miles Turner, Aaron Neesmith, Halliburton, Andrew Nemhard, and Pascal Siakam. God, Siakam. What did you make of that uh, bold Siakam trade that the Pacers It's made? really funny. I remember before their trades, both OG and Pascal, it was like, whoa, whoever gets them. Yeah. They were like, you know, prizes. And now it just feels like they've been like, eh, pretty solid <laughs> on both their teams. Like they fit in like, and they kind of do dirty work. And it's yeah. like, they're not this... Uh, the, he is. He doesn't. He, I feel like he's been playing great. Like, yeah. but he hasn't been this. And it's it's interesting. I was looking at Pascal's pre-trade and post-trade splits this season, and it's like he played thirty-six games with Toronto, and I think now he's up to like thirty-two games with Indiana. That's crazy. And his stats are like nearly identical, which is weird. But it feels like a very totally, different, you way. know, different peg in a different, you know, and he's box playing of pegs. differently. It feels like. yeah, yeah, like it's. It, Cause it could just cause of how they play in Indiana, yeah. like that ball moves around and they got three other guys who are better at offense. It's true. And, you know, like Pascal has definitely given the bulls matchup fits, whether it be back in Toronto for the last several seasons or now here in Indiana. And when you look at the, the front court pairing of him and miles Turner specifically, like miles Turner, for whatever reason, always has just lit up the bulls throughout his career. Dude. He, he gets hot against the bulls. I don't know why. Um, if you look at the Bulls' most recent game, and it, you know they pulled out this miraculous comeback, and they ended up winning in overtime after Demar hits this insane baseline jumper. I don't know if you remember seeing yes. that one. I mean, it's to, to send the game to Demar an has the Pacers. He does. Yeah. I mean, he had the game insane buzzer beater against them in, uh, two seasons ago. But so, like, the Bulls have not been doing well in the front court recently. It's been a big part of their defensive dip. Uh, Vooch has just been getting exposed night in, night out. He got exposed by a non-existent create a player in the Wizards front court on Monday. Um, and, and so you, you have this front court in Indiana now of Siakam, like bona fide, mm-hmm. like all NBA caliber player who can get you 21 and 10 easy. And then Miles Turner, who just for whatever reason, when he's playing the Bulls, is like, oh, all right, MJ's secret stuff in the locker. Get this. So Miles Turner's numbers this season, pretty respectable what you would expect from Miles Turner. 17 points, 7 boards. Shooting splits, 52, 35, 77. Oh, yes. A guy who you know as a big can sometimes be a a floor-spreading big. Come on. And sometimes is cold. In his three games against the Bulls this season, he's averaging nearly 24 a game on shooting splits of 56, 50, 76. And probably the blocks are probably even more because I feel like he always has a ton of blocks against us too. So, uh, you know, he, he poured in 27 points when the Bulls played the Pacers earlier in March on five of eight from downtown. And God. so you're talking about the Bulls who are getting exposed, like one of the worst teams in the league at giving up open threes, especially yeah. corner threes this season. Teams are hitting up nearly 42% on their corner threes against the Bulls. And you have Siakam to deal with without a roster, the Bulls roster that just basically just has no power forwards anymore. Torrey Craig is old and tired and, you know, taped together. And he's like a generous <laughs> six seven. I mean, he's short. You're starting Caruso at the four, power forward. And you know you you can't have Vooch guarding around the perimeter because it never goes well. You can't play Vooch in a drop because that doesn't work either. And you have this like one two yeah. punch of Siakam and, and Turner, Drum- and you say, what do you do? And Drummond can't guard the three. No. Like, and so yeah, it's. I feel like it's really I, I, that this the lack of size is something that I did not anticipate that would be this big of a problem. And because it just feels like everyone's gotten bigger. Mm-hmm. Like, it just feels like people are bigger now. Like, yeah. And some teams was like, damn, you're really long and big. And this, this Indiana team is yeah. very big. Yeah. I, and, and that's the crazy thing. You worry about, you know, okay, if you're scouting the, the Pacers, what do you try and take away first? Well, do you try and contain Halliburton, 
who still well, at you know well, he's still he's been on a bit of a slide he, since coming back he from his injury. Playing, but he's trying to get that. It's just that all NBA. He's trying to get to that sixty-five game yeah. threshold, and it you sucks. know his his shooting numbers have fallen way down he's from hurt. before his injury. He's still leading the league in assists per game. Which is in, in, he carved up the Bulls again in their game on March thirteenth. Um, I think he had fourteen assists in that game. The you know the. The second Bulls Pacers game of the season, he had twenty assists against the Bulls. That's like, like insane, man. Halliburton can pick this Bulls defense apart. He's proven it time and again. But with the fact that he has not been shooting as well recently and what the Bulls have been getting exposed by defensively, you're like, right, I'm more worried about Turner and Siakam tonight than I am about Halliburton. But that, that's just three incredible weapons. I also feel like TJ McConnell's been on a bit of a heater lately, and I'm glad he's Huge not playing. Huge heater. I'm glad he's not. Like, I saw he wasn't playing, I was like, and I was, like, relieved, and I was like, I can't believe I'm having, like, an actual reaction to TJ McConnell news. <laughs> I mean, like, it, he was he was getting love on the most recent Low Post podcast. They were talking about, like, the playoff and play in races in the East, and they were talking Pacers, and they were like, yeah, man, like, TJ McConnell. On heater. And, and like, he, he was giving the Bulls fits in their game earlier this month. He's, like, he he burned Caruso on a few different possessions. Like, he he cooked Caruso. He cooked cooked Caruso is is it would be a great Hulu show. <laughs> Cooking with Caruso. Cooking with Caruso. I mean, I, I would assume at least a few episodes would be dedicated to different kinds of cookies because that's like be. Stacy's. You know, this this is the mustiest of must wins. Is a very is very funny. Ooh, must because like musty yeah, is yeah, a it's different it's quite it's good a, an adjective of its own i mean both teams play well, i know it's like you open an old closet at your grandparents house you're like ooh, that ooh, is a that is a musty mo- win. mothball that is a that is a mothball must win right there yeah, no defense that's great i want to see let's just let's just hoop like yeah. i don't want to see defense let's go not tonight not, not tonight on a Wednesday. Not tonight. Let's just have fun. Let's have fun. We are past the 7 o'clock hour here in Central Time Zone. That means tip-off right around the corner. We will be right back here for post-game uh, with our guy, John Sabine, our producer, Joyce Bathis, and Will the Go Gottlieb, who is at the UC tonight reporting live uh, on this Bulls Pacers action. Make sure you follow him for his in-game updates. Will underscore Gottlieb is where you can find that. And uh, we will talk to you on the other side of Bulls Pacers. Hit the like on your way out if you didn't do it yet. We appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to that CHGO Sports YouTube channel. 52,800 and growing. Whoa. Appreciate all of y'all. Yeah. It's like a town. <laughs> Follow our guy on John, our, our guy John on Twitter too, at JCBine214 on Bulls underscore Peck. We'll talk to you for post game Bulls Nation. Let's hoop. Mm-hmm.